So, we have already spoken about the cross product, but we haven't finished our discussion of the cross product. So far, this is what we know. We know that given two vectors, vector A and vector B, and given our angle between vector A and B, and knowing the magnitudes of vector A and vector B, we can find the magnitude of the vector produced of taking the cross product of vector A cross B. In other words, knowing the magnitude of A and knowing the magnitude of B and knowing our angle between vector, uh, vector A and vector B, we can find our magnitude of the vector, say vector C, produced by taking their cross product. And the formula for that is magnitude of A multiplied by magnitude of B multiplied by the sine of the angle between vector A and vector B. So this formula gives us the magnitude or amount of vector A cross vector B. Now we said to find the direction of our, um, uh, of our vector C produced, we simply use our right hand rule and the direction of it is always perpendicular to both vector A and vector B. But now, suppose we want to find the coordinates of the vector produced by taking the cross product of A cross B. In other words, we want to find the coordinates of this vector C. So, if we, for example, are given that our vector A is 1, 2, 4, and our vector B is 1, 3, 0, in other words, these are three-dimensional vectors, their points on the x, y, z plane, can we find the coordinates of x, the coordinate of y, and the coordinate of z of our vector produced by taking the cross product of A cross B? And the answer is yes we can. A systematic approach, a systematic way does exist and I will show you it in the following way. Now, <clears throat> note that this systematic approach comes from mathematics. It comes from linear algebra and taking the determinants of our matrices. Now, I'm not going to go into detail about how that's accomplished. I'm just going to give you the systematic approach. So, if you follow this approach, you will always be able to get our three coordinates of our three-dimensional vector. So, you can find the vector, um, the coordinate x, coordinate y, and coordinate z. So, here's how we do it. Angle, uh, vector A cross vector B is equal to, so you draw two parallel lines, and on the first row, in the first row, you write I hat, J hat, and K hat. So I hat simply represents the unit vector pointing in the X direction, in the X axis. J hat is simply your unit vector pointing in the Y direction. And K hat is simply your unit vector pointing in the Z direction. And the magnitude of these vectors is simply one. And that's why they're called unit vectors. Now, what you do is the following. This column represents all the coordinates that are the x-coordinates. These guys are all the y-coordinates, and these guys are all the z-coordinates. Now, your first row should be your a-vector, and your second row sh should be your b-vector. So, 1 and 1 go into the first column, 2 and 3 go to the second column, and 4 and 0 go into our third column, okay? So our x-coordinates, our y-coordinates, and our z-coordinates for our two vectors a and b. So now this is what we do. This is the reason this is called the cross product, because we actually take the cross product. So in order to find our x-coordinate of our vector produced, we cover up our first column and we multiply 2 cross 0, so 2 times 0, <coughs> minus 4 times 3. So, 2 times 0 minus 4 times 3. And this gives me my x coordinate. And I multiply this whole thing by i hat because i hat represents the x coordinate. And now I subtract, and again, I put two parentheses. And now I find my y coordinate. So I cover up my y. So let's cover my y up with uh, this eraser. So now we cross multiply 1 times 0 minus 4 times 1. 1 times 0 minus 4 times 1. So this guy inside minus or times negative 1 gives us our y coordinate. 
and so we multiply it by the j hat because this represents our j hat, our y coordinates. And finally, we say plus, once again, we add two parentheses, we cover up our k now, our z coordinates, and we get 1 times 3 minus 2 times 1. So 1 times 3 minus 2 times 1, and this is our final z coordinate and we multiply this guy by k hat because this is our z coordinate. Now notice I have a plus here and I have a minus here. Don't forget this minus. It's important. If you forget this minus, then your answer is incorrect. So now we solve. 2 times 0 is 0. Minus 12 is simply minus 12. So our x coordinate is minus 12. So minus 12 multiplied by i hat plus 1 times 0 is 0, minus 4 times 1, minus 4, times the negative here, so we get plus 4 j hat, and plus 1 times 3 minus 2 times 1, simply plus 1 times k hat. So, <coughs> our c vector is simply minus 12 comma 4 comma 1. So our x axis is minus, our x coordinate is minus 12, our y coordinate is plus 4, and our z coordinate is plus 1. And this is our vector. And if I wanted to, I can plot this vector on the x, y, z plane. Now, I want to ask the following question. Can I find my magnitude of my vector knowing my three coordinates? The answer is yes, I can. The way I find the magnitude is by the following manner. Now, I have to represent this vector with two parallel lines like so. And this means the magnitude. So, this equals radical or square root, and I simply take the squares of all my coordinates. So, x squared plus y squared plus z squared, take the square root of the whole thing gives us. So, minus 12 squared is 144, plus 4 squared is 160. Uh, 16 and 144 plus 16 is 160 plus 1 squared is 1 so this is 161 square root that and we get approximately approximately 12.69 so this is my magnitude my quantity of this vector now if I want to find my direction I simply use my right hand rule but know that this vector is perpendicular to both vector a and vector b now note that i could also find my magnitude of a and vector b in this same manner and in fact if i know my angle if i know my angle between these two uh, vectors i can simply instead of going through this whole process i can simply find the magnitude of a using this equation, the magnitude of b using this equation, and find the sine of my angle, and then simply use this formula. But that will give me only the magnitude of my c. It will not give me the coordinates. So if you're asked to find the coordinates, you have to use this systematic approach.